Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for game week one. The idea of this series is you can pick players that I show you pretty much randomly and you should do all right. And if you finish top 5% globally, which I think you probably will do if you follow this series, then you'll do all right in your mini leagues. If you only pick from this, you absolutely will not win overall, but you should be quite safe in what you do. So last season, I followed this strictly, even though I didn't really want to because I like doing crazy picks. And I think I finished in the top 1.8% globally, which is all right. So I'm going to try something different myself this year. But the idea of this series is it's aimed at those people who are maybe in a work league or a family league and they haven't got time to do lots of research or they're not sure who really to pick. You can just watch these videos and make selections from what I'm showing you and you really should do all right. So the last two years I've done this, I've chosen which players to put in here, but this year I'm going much more on just who is popular. So if you pick popular players, you will naturally kind of do all right. The key is to avoid the popular players that are not worth having. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully as I go through this, you'll understand what's going on. Starting with the goalkeepers, Raya, five and a half million. He's a good keeper. He's probably going to be one of the top two or three scoring keepers for the season. Five and a half is pretty expensive for a keeper. And a disadvantage of choosing him is that you won't then be able to get three outfield Arsenal players. And you may want to do that. But Ray is perfectly okay. And he's in here because he's popular. Becker is also okay. But the same disadvantage with Becker. If you have Becker, you only then get two other Liverpool players. And you may want three. Liverpool's first six fixtures are much nicer than Arsenal's first six fixtures. So there's a reasonable chance Beckham may score more than Raya, but they're both perfectly good picks. Down to five million now. Pickford's okay, but pre-season I think Everton haven't been great. And I wouldn't be surprised if the first few weeks Everton defensively aren't very good, similar to last season, and then they start getting good. But Pickford's perfectly all right. And as with nearly all players in the system, he is popular. Martinez is all right. If I had to choose between the two at the moment, I'd go Pickford though. I say between the two because they're both five million. Flecken's four and a half. He's all right. Not as good as any of the other four, but he's okay. Ariola four and a half. Turner's very popular. He's at four million. Do not buy Turner. So he's almost certainly not going to play. And what's going to happen is after two, three, four weeks, people are going to start selling him and he's going to go down in value. So if you've still got him, he's going to go from four down to 3.9 million. And so when you eventually move him on, you've lost 0.1 million. If you want to go for a four million non-playing keeper, get one that's not popular. For example, Ward from Leicester, four million. Because he's low owned, he's not going to go down in price. So turn, turn is the first player on this. I'm saying do not buy. Now, we didn't have any green as in very good goalkeepers. But through the remaining pages, there are quite a few green players. Just need to warn you, as the season goes on, we'll probably have fewer. But the point is, you've got lots of good players you can choose from. So Trent, the most expensive defender, 7 million. Seems like he's a good buy. White, Arsenal, 6.5 million. He's a good buy. So with Arsenal, I know I said three of the first five aren't great. But if you're intending to wildcard, I don't know, week 7, 8, 9 or afterwards, or you don't know when... I don't think you should worry, be concerned about having Arsenal defenders. Yes, they might let in goals in three of the first five, but long term, they should be all right. Saliba, another Arsenal defender, only six. Gvardiol, the first game away to Chelsea, may let in a goal then. But apart from that, Man City got a reasonable chance of keeping clean sheets. And Gvardiol, at the end of last season, was getting some good attacking returns. So Trippier, although he's a good player... At time of recording, we don't know what his status is. We don't know if he's going to start for Newcastle the weekend. If he does, is he going to get 60 minutes? We just don't know. Six million is quite a lot for what you're going to get. Now, their first game is home to Southampton. If we knew he was starting and staying on the pitch for a long time, he would be definitely worth having. But because we don't know that, I'm saying he's risky. So he might be good, but buy beware with him. Uh, Virgil van Dijk's perfectly good for Liverpool obviously not as attacking as Trent he would get three or four goals probably during the season from heading in from a corner Gabriel's perfectly good at the moment for Arsenal six million now for the cheaper defenders Pedro Porro 
Tottenham won't keep many clean sheets probably, but he's nice and attacking. Their first game is away to Leicester, but Leicester at the moment with injuries and losing players and losing their manager from last season are probably going to be struggling, I think, to start with. So there's a chance, a reasonable chance, 40% chance, maybe 35%, that Spurs will keep a clean sheet. But even if they don't, Pedro Porro is quite attacking and Leicester, I think, defensively are going to be quite poor. Anderson for Palace, he's in here because he's popular. He's like, nah, he's all right. Four and a half million. Burn for four and a half. I think I've, at the end of this video, I've got some sample teams made up from these players. And I think Burn's in quite a few of those. Long term, I think he's a bit dodgy because we don't know with all the defenders that Newcastle should have coming back from injury. They may be buying Mark Gahey as well from Crystal Palace. Byrne may not be there long term playing every week, but initially he's probably going to play. But I'd put him down as being a bit risky. But he's probably OK. You can probably play him. He'll probably start at the weekend. Good chance of a clean sheet there. Conza for Villa. He's an OK player, but they're away. Then they've got Arsenal. Then they're away again. Uh, there are probably other defenders I'd rather get, but he's all right. Like Mikalenko, I'd probably get Mikalenko, Mikalenko before Konza personally. But again, he's just an OK player. Howard Bellis, he's popular. That's why he's in it. He's 4 million. If you buy him, he's bench fodder. He'll be on your bench most weeks. Barco is also 4 million, but he's very, very good. Now, it seems the community are a bit split regarding his future. So the first few game weeks, everyone thinks he's going to be playing. After that, some people think he's then maybe not going to be in the starting eleven. But I've heard some people like Az, who's a Brighton supporter, he thinks Barco is probably going to keep his place. So if he does, Barco for four million is a very good player to have. Regarding the midfielders, Salah, of course, is probably going to be very good. He's very expensive, 12 and a half million, but they have six very nice fixtures. Palmer is good. Palmer is very good. We don't know exactly how he's going to play under the new manager, but he can score in any game. Ten and a half million there. Saka is good. Sun is good. If I could only have one of these players, I would probably initially actually go for Sun, even if they're all the same price. Because I like his fixtures. Spurs are very, very attacking. And they've now got Solanke from Bournemouth. And Solanke's going to get lots of goals, so Son could get lots of assists. I actually, I'm, I think Son's quite good. So Foden, I've only got him as an OK player because we don't know if he's going to start at the weekend. If he does, we don't know how long he's going to play. He's just maybe not match fit, but in two or three game weeks' time, he may, may well be a green player, but initially, he's just all right. Odegaard's an okay player. Fernandez, I do quite like Fernandez, and they are home to Fulham the first game, and it's on the Friday night. So if you intend to watch the first game of the season, he's a good player to have. He's perfectly all right, and he's only eight and a half million. For the cheaper midfielders, Gordon's an okay player. I did have him as green as very good. Because first game is home to Southampton. He's very good at home. If this was last season, he would get loads of goals. However, there does seem to be some doubt or concern regarding is he going to start because Harvey Barnes is fit. If he does start, how much time is he going to get? So if he only gets half a game, is he still worth having? No, we don't know. At time recording, we don't know what's going to be going on. If we knew he was starting, he's probably absolutely worth having. But we don't know that. So he's a bit of a risk. Now, if after a few weeks you find out he's always playing, then he'd be a great player to have. I think Bowen's a good player. Home to Aston Villa, West Ham, I think are going to be quite good this season, perhaps. I think they'd be all right. Eze is very popular. Nkunku's only six and a half. The first game is at home to Man City. Man City should be good defensively. A lot of people early on were very excited about Nkunku. He may well be green very soon, and he may end the season over 7 million and getting lots of points. But at the moment, I've marked him as white. Garnacho, six and a half, and I quite like him. He's very attacking. I don't know he's going to be starting at the weekend, but he could well come on and do something special. So I think he's green. If I had to choose from the beginning, Garnacho and Nkunku personally, I'd go Garnacho. Rogers, five million, nice and cheap, and he's uh, popular. I've got Winks here. Four and a half million is bench fodder. You could choose any four and a half million player. The thing with Winks, though, is he's likely to be playing most games, maybe all games. So if he had to come on for you, he should at least get you two points. Whereas some of the 
four and a half million players aren't going to get you anything. Regarding the forwards, Haaland, most expensive player in the system, 15 million. It's not impossible to get Haaland and Salah, but it means you're missing out a bit somewhere. And I'll show you an example team with them both in. Game week two at home to Ipswich, he's probably going to be very good to have then. It's going to be very scary if you don't have him in your squad. I don't yet know if I will have him for game week two. I'm probably going to wildcard in game week two, so I've not yet decided. But he is a very good player to have. Watkins is good, 9 million. But first game's away to West Ham, second game's at home to Arsenal, so they're not great, but after that, their games get better. Isaac, I've got a new category of banker. Last season, I tried to encourage you to buy certain players, and I'd see some people's teams, and I'd be like, why haven't you got such and such? So this year, I'm telling you, you have to have Isaac. He's over 50% owned, and if he does well and you don't have him, that's going to really hurt your rank. If you have him and he doesn't do well, it doesn't matter because most managers have also not done well with Isaac. So he's a very good player to have. I recommend you have to buy him. Havertz is a good player. Tony, I've put him down as a bit dodge. We don't know what his future is going to hold. If we knew he was definitely staying at Brentford, we knew his first choice at home to Palace, weight level was not so good, then home to Southampton, he would be a good player. He's simply orange because I don't know what his future is at the moment. And then I've put Cannon in here, four and a half million. There's a handful of four and a half million strikers. If you need to release some cash, you could put one of them on your bench. You're probably not going to get any points from them though. You want to have at least one playing player on your bench, possibly more, but we'll look at some teams shortly. The cheaper forwards, Solanke, he's green, but he's nearly a banker. He's green because we don't know what minutes, if any, he's going to get in Spurs' first game, but that's a week today, that's on a Monday, so he's probably got enough time to train with the team, get up to speed. Personally, I'm expecting him to at least come on during the game. But once he starts playing regularly for Spurs, which may be as soon as the following game against Everton, he's a highly recommended player to own, I think. There's a reasonable chance he's going to get 180 points or more this season, I think. Very, very good player to have. The downside is, of course, you've only got three forward spots, so who are you going to choose? I've already said you need Isaac in there. Munez, he's good. Only six million. First game away to Man United. May not get much there, but then he's got Leicester and Ipswich, two newly promoted sides. So he could be very good. Wood. So he was good at the end of last season. The first three games are perfectly good. At home to Bournemouth, way to Southampton, home to Wolves. But the expectation is after a few game weeks, he may not play as much when other people come back from injury. But for six million, he's all right. And if you're going to wildcard quite early, it might be worth having him. Jao Pedro for five and a half. If he gets game time, he is very good. And five and a half, great price. So... This is my suggested benching order for the goalkeeper. The first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest you put on your bench. So if you've got Ward, he's on your bench, or Turner, he's on your bench, but you shouldn't buy Turner. They're not even going to play, so it really doesn't matter with those. Then I suggest Martinez, then Ariola, then Flecken, then Pickford, then Becker, then Raya. So if you have two of these players, whichever one you saw first that you've got, that's one that goes on your bench. Regarding the other players, the first player you see that you've got, I suggest, goes position three on your bench. The next one, position two. The last one, position one. I'm going to show you all the players in the system apart from six. And they're the captain's choices. So I'm suggesting if you get Cannon, of course, he's going to be on your bench. Then it'd be Harwood, Bellis, Winks, Konza, Byrne, Anderson, Barco, Jao Pedro, Mikolenko, Tony, Munez, Rogers, Wood, Nkunku, Foden, Virgil van Dijk, Gvardiol, Trippier, Eze, Bowen, Pedro Porro, Gabriel, Saliba, White, Trent, Garnacho, Solanke, Palmer, Watkins, Gordon, Odegaard, Havertz. And then regarding the captaincy, you've got six choices here for you. I think Isaac is almost certainly who I'm going to captain. I think he's going to be quite highly captain. I think he's a very good captain choice for this week. At home to Southampton, very good chance of getting an attacking return there. Other very valid captains would be Haaland, perfectly good choice, highly owned. Saka, Salah, Son and Fernandes. Any of these are perfectly good captains and any of these are perfectly good vice captains. 
And if you don't have one of these as your vice captain or you can't, you could choose any of the green players we saw earlier and they're all also okay. So now I'm going to look at four potential teams. and I've not done this before, but I've put together four teams based on just the players I've shown you. And then I've put them into the Fancy Football Hub to see how it rates the team. And I've let the Fancy Football Hub also organise the team. So on a lot of the teams, I don't necessarily agree with who's on the bench, but I'll show you that as I come to it. If you've watched any videos about Game Week 1 drafts, there are four categories, it seems. It's Haaland and Salah, just Haaland, just Salah, neither. So I'm going to show you those four permutations based on the players we've seen. So this is the Salah Haaland draft. We have Flecken in goal, Gabriel Saliba burn, Salah Eze, Odegaard, Garnacho, Haaland Wood and Jao Pedro. And then on the bench we have Ward who's not going to play, Pedro Porro, Winks and Harwood Vellis. Now I would play Pedro Porro instead of Byrne, but that's up to you. And then Fancy Football Hub because it's a team rating of 90%. Game week of 92, predicted points 67.1. And I'm not affiliated with Fancy Football Hub, by the way. It's just a tool I'm using for the videos. This next one is the Haaland only draft. We have Becker in goal now. Gabriel Trent Byrne, Saka Eze, Odegaard Garnacho, Haaland Wood Munez. And on the bench we have Ward, Pedro Porro, Winks, and again Hardwood Bellis again. I would play Porro above Byrne. This has been given 92% team rating, 92 for the game week, 67.1 predicted points. This is the draft with neither Haaland nor Salah. Becker in goal, Gabriel Trent, Pedro Porro. In the middle, Saka as a son, Odegaard Fernandez. So very nice midfield. And Isaac and Wood up front. On the bench, Ward, Jao Pedro, Barco, then Howard Bellis again. This got 92% team rating, 68.7 predicted points, 94% game week rating. And then finally, the Salah draft. This is Becker, Gabriel Trent Byrne, Salah, Saka, Eze, Odegaard, Isaac, Wood, Munez. On the bench, Pedro, Porro, Winks, Anderson and Ward. This got 95% team rating, 69.9 predicted points, game week rating at 96. As for the background picture, there he is. That's Gareth Bale. And this is inspired by a name of a team in, the, uh, in our league. So we have Uncle Pat who's got a team called Bale Caesar. And I thought, that's good inspiration for an image. So here we are. That is based on Uncle Pat's Bale Caesar because Gareth Bale was a very good player. So there we have it. That's my thoughts on the most popular players. If you want to just follow this series blindly during the season, I think you'll probably do all right in your mini leagues. You won't win overall. You may win your mini league if there's only like 10, 12 players in there. If there's over 20 players in your mini league, you probably won't win it following this series, but you'll be near the top. All right, thank you very much for watching. Bye.